Have you ever found an amazing strength that helps you face problems head on, smile and move through them without a second thought? That's not magic. It's the power that's inside every person, which can be woken up through understanding and self-control. We get stuck in our negative spirals a lot of the time, feeling sorry for ourselves and blaming others, but every moment of self-pity keeps us from our real selves and goals. Today, through 10 weakness habits, we will not only find those weaknesses, but also learn how to face them and turn them into strengths. Stoic philosophy will be our kind but strong friend, showing us how to control our fears and turn pain into chances to grow. Together, we will find the secret to resilience and figure out how to make sure that every stumble isn't the end, but a way to make the next journey stronger. This isn't just wisdom. It's a promise of a bright future where every challenge is a chance to shine. Let's enter the world of Stoicism, where strength comes from facing challenges head on and beating them. You will go from darkness to light, from weakness to strength. But before we start, I want to challenge you. Watch the video all the way through and adopt all 10 habits that are talked about in it. Even one of them can help you control your deepest weaknesses and find inner strength. If you're up for the challenge, leave a comment below. I'm up for the challenge before we start. Habit number one, trying to avoid problems. Seneca, one of the great Stoic thinkers, once said his words are both a reminder and a challenge to all of us. When we face problems and difficulties in life, many of us look for comfort and try to avoid problems without realizing that this makes us weaker. Avoiding problems and staying in our comfort zone creates a vicious cycle where fear and procrastination are common companions. But Stoicism teaches us that in every challenge and failure, there is an opportunity for growth. Being Stoic doesn't mean getting rid of your feelings or dodging problems. Instead, it means learning to face and accept them with a calm mind. Stoics believe that every problem should be seen as a chance to test ourselves and develop virtues like patience and courage. When we take on challenges, we not only get better at solving problems, but we also gain confidence and the ability to deal with stress. Facing challenges and being uncomfortable directly benefits us and makes us an example for others. How can we use the Stoic philosophy in our daily lives? Our bravery and determination to get through tough teams will inspire those around us to follow the road of personal growth and development. To begin, you should face and accept the problems you have. Don't try to avoid them. See them as chances to get smarter and better. Set small goals. Take on each challenge one at a time. And remember that nothing is impossible on the way to growth or on the journey to find yourself. We often get stuck in moments of putting things off without understanding that each passing second is a chance to get stronger. Stoicism isn't just a way to learn how to be strong. It's also a way to remember to enjoy every moment of life. Let's look at the second step to finding your secret strength and making your life better. People often say that stopping something before it happens is better than fixing it. In the same way, avoiding problems altogether can save time, energy and resources in many areas of life, such as domestic, professional and academic ones. Individuals can avoid possible problems and make it easier to reach their goals by taking proactive steps. In this section, we'll talk about five important things that will help you avoid problems. Prepare for challenges. Look at past problems, business trends, and expected changes to see what problems might come up. Do thorough risk assessments to find weak spots and come up with ways to fix them before they happen. Set up clear lines of communication. Encourage people to talk to each other in groups, organizations or relationships. 
to handle concerns, make sure everyone knows what to expect, and avoid misunderstandings before they get worse, it's best to encourage dialogue. Set goals. Actively solving problems. Take a proactive approach by dealing with possible problems before they get worse. Take precautions and follow rules to lower risks and make it less likely that problems will happen. Spend money on learning and getting better all the time. Always know about the newest tools, trends and best practices in your field. Always look at your tactics and change them as needed to stay ahead of possible problems and stay ahead of the competition. Develop your ability to bend and adapt. Be ready to change how you do things and be flexible in how you approach things. Make backup plans so you can quickly deal with problems that come up out of the blue and keep your goals in mind. You can take charge of the challenges of life and work by using these tactics. This will reduce the number of problems that happen and increase your chances of success. Remember that you can't completely avoid problems, but if you take action, you can make them less common and less severe, which will help you reach your goals more quickly and easily. Habit number two, putting off doing something. Seneca once said, while we wait for life to pass, life passes while we wait for it to pass. This powerful statement reminds us of how valuable time is and how important it is to act right away. But how do we escape the trap of procrastination when every morning we have to decide whether to stay in bed and dream or to bravely leave our comfort zone and face the challenges that await us, turning each day into a vibrant and meaningful new page? Not only does putting things off waste time, but it also gets in the way of our growth and success. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher and emperor, once said, You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do, say and think. So why do we avoid challenges when every moment of procrastination kills our creativity and passion? The first step to getting rid of procrastination is to admit that it's not a permanent part of who we are. Have you ever asked yourself, you could leave life right now, let that determine what you do, say, the answer lies in pushing ourselves by making clear attainable goals and forcing ourselves to reach them. Turn every action you take into a win over yourself, one at a time. Building a chain of victories over putting things off. We not only learn to enjoy every moment of life this way, but we also find happiness and satisfaction in the process of being our best selves. Getting past our problems one step at a time. We think that every story has a lesson, and every lesson has the power to change lives. How have you dealt with and gotten past procrastination in your life? Share your thoughts and experiences to help build a strong community that wants to make progress and grow as a person. Putting off doing something, also called procrastination, is a common habit in which people put off doing things they should be doing. It often makes people more stressed, causes them to miss deadlines, and makes them less productive. To grow personally and professionally, we need to know why we put things off and how to stop doing that. Recognize the pattern. If you want to stop putting things off, you must first be aware that you are doing it. Think about how you act and look for patterns of putting things off. Being aware of yourself is important for making good changes. Figure out the reasons. There are many reasons why people put things off, including fear of failing, needing to be perfect, not being motivated, or feeling too busy. You can come up with effective ways to deal with the reasons why you put things off by knowing their causes. Split up big tasks into smaller ones. Big jobs can seem scary and impossible to do, which makes people put them off. Split up big chores into smaller ones that you can handle. This makes them less scary and lets you work on them slowly, which makes you less likely to put things off. Make your goals and due dates clear.
setting clear dates and goals gives you structure and holds you accountable. Set clear, attainable goals with reasonable due dates. By giving you a clear focus and schedule for finishing tasks, a clear roadmap can help you stop putting things off. Practice self-discipline and time management. If you want to stop putting things off, you need to learn how to be self-disciplined and handle your time well. Make a plan. Put things in order of importance and set aside time for work and fun activities. Be strict with yourself and hold yourself responsible for sticking to your plan. By using these lessons you can successfully fight procrastination and form habits that help you be more productive and successful in many areas of your life. Habit number three, not being able to handle bad feelings. Dealing with bad feelings is both a skill and an art. It takes time and a deep willingness to accept what is happening. Marcus Aurelius, the emperor and philosopher, taught us that we are strong not by avoiding problems, but by how we deal with and solve them. You control your mind, not things that happen outside of it. If you understand this, you will find strength. He wrote this to stress that the key to keeping inner peace is to control our thoughts, not the outside world. Here's an example. Can you stop and ask yourself, does this worry help, when you're worried about the future? Stoicism tells us that worrying about the future is pointless because we can't control it. Instead, we should focus on the present, where we can make things happen. The future is full of doubt, so live right now. Seneca told us that if you start to apply this theory to your life, you'll see that every problem and every bad feeling is a chance to get better. You might ask yourself, how can I make myself stronger with this ache? It's not about getting rid of bad feelings, but about learning to deal with them and use them to propel your personal growth. Ultimately, Stoicism doesn't tell us to stop caring about pain. Instead, it tells us to knowingly accept it by letting go off and changing our negative emotions. Not only do we find inner strength, but we also find freedom and inner peace. This means that at the next task, a bad feeling. How will you answer? Leave your answer in the comments section below this video. It's easy to get caught up in the upas and downs of life and forget what's important. Stoic philosophy, with its timeless lessons and focus on self-mastery, offers a way to deep understanding and integration. However, as we try to improve ourselves, we sometimes forget an important part of happiness and inner strength. Habit number four, not caring about other people's well-being. People who follow the Stoic theory often make the mistake of not caring about the happiness and well-being of others. Being too selfish not only ties us to the people around us, but it also keeps us from being our real selves. Why do we do this? It's easy to forget how important it is to care and be kind. Stoic philosophy tells us that being happy means more than just understanding and accepting how we feel inside. It also means making the family happy as a whole. We want to remember you that everything you do, no matter how small, can make a difference in other people's lives for the better. Have you ever thought about how a smile, a sincere praise, or a small act of kindness can not only show us how powerful it is to care about others, but also make us feel better? Encouragement not only helps other people, but it also helps us become the best versions of ourselves and help society grow. In a world full of problems and unfairness, we need to remember that being kind and caring to others is not only the right thing to do, it's also our duty. In some way, we can all motivate and excite other people. Now what? Maybe we should start by making small changes to how we talk to each other every day. We do our best to listen and share the signs. Take the time to get to know other people and help them without asking anything in return. Everything you get in the reviews teaches you to be kind and support from others. 
not only makes our lives better, but it also honors and supports the Stoic concept. I want to know if you've noticed that when we care about other people, we also benefit. Showing kindness not only makes the lives of those we help better, but it also gives our own lives satisfaction and deep meaning. Some people may find it appealing to not care about other people's well-being in a world where empathy and kindness seem to be in short supply. However, this way of thinking can have many bad effects, not only on the people around us, but also on our own growth and happiness. Let's talk about this some more in five main points. Lack of human connection. When we don't care about other people's well-being, we cut off the human connections that make our lives better. Care and worry for each other are important for relationships. Without it, we feel alone and cut off from the world around us. Ethical dilemmas. Ignoring other people's well-being often leads to choices that are morally question. Our actions have an effect on the people around us, whether we're with them in a personal or business setting. Not caring about their well-being can get you into moral trouble and hurt your image. Less empathy. Being able to understand and share other people's thoughts is an important part of being human. We can't feel as much concern for other people when we don't care about their well-being. In turn, this can make it hard to understand and connect with other people's situations. Negative effects on society. A society where people only care about themselves and don't care about the well-being of others is one full of conflict and trouble. In this kind of setting, it's hard for people to work together and make progress as a group, which leads to social breakdown and disorder. Personal fulfillment. It's funny, but helping other people is often what makes us truly happy and fulfilled. Doing nice things for other people not only makes their lives better, but it also makes our own lives more meaningful and brings us joy. We miss out on this source of happiness when we don't care about the well-being of others. Finally, ignoring other people's well-being might seem easier at first, but in the end it will leave you without meaningful connections, moral integrity or personal satisfaction. By practicing empathy and kindness, we not only make the lives of those around us better, but we also improve our own health and help make the world a better place for everyone. Habit number five, self-talk that is bad. When we're trying to learn more about ourselves and the world around us, negative self-talk often gets in the way. This isn't just a small psychological habit, it's a big problem that stops our growth and happiness. Have you ever thought about why we spend more time criticizing ourselves than supporting ourselves? The ancient Stoic philosopher Epicus said that people are not upset by things, but by how they see them. This shows how powerful our thoughts are in shaping our lives. Negative self-talk not only makes us feel bad, but it also makes it harder to deal with problems and take advantage of chances. Stoicism teaches us to love and respect ourselves by teaching us how to control our bad thoughts. This doesn't mean ignoring your feelings or experiences. It means recognizing and accepting them in a healthy way. So how can we turn this negative self-talk into something that helps us? First, figure out where your bad thoughts are coming from and think about them. You can do this by writing in a book, meditating, or talking to a trusted friend. Once you've found them, challenge them by asking them things like, is this thought true? Is it based on facts or just an exaggeration of the mind? Next, try thinking positively. When a bad thought comes up, change it with a good or encouraging one. This might be hard at first, but over time you'll get better at changing your mind. Lastly, keep in mind that accepting yourself is a process, not a goal. We all have flaws and strengths. Instead of criticizing yourself, work on building on your strengths and learning from your weaknesses. 
Remember that every step, no matter how small, counts on the path to overcoming negative self-talk and achieving self-respect. Stoic philosophy not only teaches us about the power of thought, but also how to turn it into a positive force. Before we move on to the next habit, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for joining us on this journey. The challenge is not only recognizing the low self-esteem habits you've developed, but also facing them and breaking them. Ask yourself how these habits have affected your life and are you ready to change them for the better? If you find value in this content, please don't hesitate to share it. Habit number six, overindulging in material things. In a world full of options and constant advertising, it's easy to fall into the trap of materialistic consumerism. We are drawn into a never-ending cycle of shopping in an attempt to find happiness through possessions. But does the pile of material POS things around us really bring us happiness and contentment? Marcus Aurelius once said that the quality of your thoughts determines the happiness of your life. He meant that chasing the short-term pleasures that material goods offer is ultimately just a game of cat and mouse with yourself. For example, getting a new phone may be exciting at first, but it quickly wears off, leaving behind emptiness and new wants. This is a never-ending circle of wanting more and more, but if we stop and think about what really gives our lives meaning and long-term value, we might find happiness in simplicity. Instead of spending money on things that aren't necessary, why not spend it on experiences, family ties and personal growth? Stoicism is more than just a way of life. It's also about realizing that life's true value doesn't come from material things. It tells us to live an aware life focused on our inner values and spirit instead of material things and pursuits. So, as we search for true happiness and meaning, do we ever stop to think about whether the things we keep chasing are really what we need, or are they just bright lights taking us into the maze of emptiness where we can find true freedom? Being free of material needs not only leads to a more meaningful life, but it also helps us reconnect with our true selves. In the rough path of life, each step teaches us something important. But how can we find our way again when the shadows of the past dim the light of the present? Stoicism, a lighthouse in the darkness, shows us how to accept what is and turn it into strength. Let's look at how this ancient philosophy not only helps us face the past, but also break free from old habits that are holding us back. Many of us give in to the temptation of material possessions too easily in today's consumer-driven world, which is bad for our health. Overindulging in material things includes spending too much, being obsessed with things, and putting money ahead of more important things in life. This kind of behavior can really hurt our physical, mental, and even emotional health. To keep your life balanced and happy, you need to know the risks of this kind of behavior. Less satisfaction. Having too many material things can, ironically, make you less happy and satisfied. The initial excitement of getting something new wears off quickly, leaving us wanting to make another buy, and so on. Stress on the finances. Spending too much on material things can make your finances unstable. Spending more than we can afford can put us in debt, cause stress, and keep us from reaching our long-term financial goals. Shallow connections. Putting too much emphasis on material things can make it harder to build deep connections. When money is the most important thing, real connections with other people may suffer because we value status symbols more than real connections with other people. Effects on the environment. The never-ending desire for material things hurts the environment. Resource loss, pollution and trash are caused by mass production and consumption, which makes climate change worse and hurts ecosystems spiritual and emotional deprivation. 
When we spend too much on material things, we often feel mentally and emotionally empty. True happiness comes from relationships, experiences, personal growth, and having a sense of meaning in life. Things can't give you these things. When used in balance, material things can make our lives better, but too much of them can cause a lot of bad things to happen. We can live a more healthy and satisfying life if we understand the dangers of being too materialistic and put relationships, experiences, and personal growth at the top of our list of priorities. Habit number seven, focusing on mistakes made in the past. Have you ever felt like the ghosts of the past were holding you back? Those are the nights you spend thinking about the past, the mistakes you can't fix, and the roads you didn't take at that time. The Stoic philosophy shows us how to face our pasts and move forward with determination. But how do we really get past those ghosts and move forward with strength? Remember that every mistake is a valuable lesson and a step on the path to perfection. For example, think of a figure skater who gets back up after every fall and keeps moving forward. Mistakes don't weaken them. Instead, they serve as crucibles that make them stronger. We need to decide if we are ready to face our mistakes and learn from them. Although it's hard, forgiving ourselves is the key to mental freedom and personal growth. Instead of focusing on the past, focus on making the future a better place where you can be the best version of yourself. We become better when we accept and learn from our mistakes. They also teach us patience, humility, and the courage to face new challenges. What do you see when you think about the past? Are you scared of the mistakes you made? Or do you see the light of lessons learned and chances to grow? Remember that in the race of life, the key to success and happiness is to keep going even when things go wrong and to believe in a new future. Maybe you've also had times when the ghosts of the past keep coming back to haunt you and pull you backward. Share with us your own stories of how you've learned from mistakes and gotten through them. Are there any stoic ideas that you've used in your life and found to work? We look forward to hearing your stories and important lessons. It's not just a waste of time to think about the bad things you've done in the past. It's actually a good way to improve yourself and your career. We can grow, be more resilient, and make better decisions if we admit when we're wrong. We'll talk about why it's important to think about mistakes made in the past and how that can help make the future better. Admit your mistakes. Admitting your mistakes is the first thing you need to do to learn from them. Denying or avoiding the truth only keeps the circle of mistakes going. We can grow and become more self-aware when we face our mistakes head on. Find the root causes. Every mistake has a reason behind it, whether it's a lack of knowledge, bad judgment, or something outside of your control. By looking into why mistakes were made in the past, we can see where we can improve and come up with ways to stop them from happening again. Take out lessons learned. Making mistakes is a great way to learn. Every mistake teaches us something useful that we can use to guide our future actions and choices. Backward steps can be turned into chances for growth and development by drawing lessons from past mistakes. Develop your resilience. Tough times make you stronger. We build resilience, the power to get back up stronger after a setback by facing and getting over our past mistakes. Accepting mistakes as opportunities to learn builds a strong mindset that helps us handle future problems with confidence and style. Use what you know wisely. We can make better choices and plan for success now that we know what not to do after making mistakes in the past. We turn hindsight into insight by using what we've learned from experience. This helps us avoid problems and find a way to reach our goals. Finally, thinking about mistakes you've made in the past isn't a pointless way to punish yourself. It's a way to grow, become more resilient, and improve yourself. 
When we admit, study, and learn from our mistakes, we can use failures as stepping stones to a better future. Habit number eight, looking for outside confirmation. How many times have we gotten lost in the maze of modern life looking for light from faraway stars instead of the fire within ourselves? How many times have we let the echo of the crowd drown out the voices of reason and soul? This question not only leads us into the heart of Stoic philosophy, but it also starts a journey toward self-mastery and inner happiness. When we constantly seek approval from others, we not only become dependent on them, but our own voices become less clear. Stoicism says that the best way to be happy and confident is to look for satisfaction inside yourself instead of approval from other people. A Stoic master named Marcus Aurelius wrote in his writings that the soul is colored by the thoughts that go through it. This advice rings true through time, telling us how important it is to stay calm and not let other people's opinions affect us. So how can we boost our self-esteem and independence without looking for approval from others? Are you living according to your values and principles, or are you still trying to find your self-worth in other people's approval? By setting personal goals and focusing on self-development, we not only free ourselves from the pressure of seeking approval from others, but we also find true strength and happiness within ourselves. Remember that we create our own value, not someone else. If you learned anything from habit number eight, please leave a comment and practice seeking inner satisfaction under the comments section of this video. Habit number nine, not able to deal with change. Like a river that never stops running, each step on the journey of life takes us through different stages of change. Going through destiny's twists and turns is like trying to hold on to the waves only to see them slip away. Maybe deep down we all have an unspoken fear. The fear of not knowing what to do when we let go of something. Because we're used to meeting new things, why do we often back down when we face trouble instead of spreading our wings, accepting it, and learning from it? Although it can be hard to accept, change is an essential part of life and shapes who we are. It teaches us valuable lessons and gives us chances to find our hidden strengths and amazing adaptability. For example, if someone loses their job they should not give up, but instead see it as a chance to learn new skills or try a new career path. They know that every change opens a new door of opportunity. Stoic philosophy isn't about getting rid of feelings or escaping problems. Instead it teaches us to accept and adjust to all changes with calm and purpose. By doing this, we not only get over our fears and worries, but we also learn new things. We need to grow and get better in every part of our lives. In today's fast-paced world, it's natural to look for comfort and ease, but what if I told you that those times of comfort are actually holding you back and stopping your personal growth? The answer lies in Stoic philosophy, which is the key to finding your secret strengths and making your life better. Habit number 10. Overvaluing comfort and ease. In a world where ease and comfort are often valued most, Stoic philosophy makes us want to find more value in hard times and problems. It makes you wonder if we're letting ourselves get so caught up in the safety net of comfort that we forget how to get stronger. When we put comfort first and avoid inconvenience, we are, in fact, missing out on chances to grow. Challenges and difficulties not only push us to our limits, but they also let us explore and develop our inner strength. Have you ever wondered if, when faced with difficulty, you'll choose the easy path or the hard one? Stoicism doesn't mean turning down all comforts. It means realizing and accepting that comfort isn't the main goal of life. Instead, it means realizing that facing and overcoming difficulties is what makes us grow and develop. Someone once said that we don't dare things because they are hard, but because we don't dare them because they are hard. 
You don't have to give up short-term comfort to achieve something bigger and more long-lasting in your life. Strength and resilience aren't things you are born with. They're built up over time and through experiences. When we stop looking for comfort as a requirement for happiness, we give ourselves the chance to become the strongest versions of ourselves. Comfort isn't inherently bad, but valuing it too highly can stop your growth. Stoicism asks us to think about what comfort and ease are really worth, and it promotes a life where growth and self-improvement are the most important things. Personal development is important. Change your life with grit. As we end our journey to discover the 10 habits that make you vulnerable, we want to highlight the memory of the grit philosophy. Every person's journey is unique. The problems and habits we discuss are not just obstacles. How did this topic find your way? This is not an easy question, but we hope you will share, empower others and inform them to be wise and create community. Please comment below this video and share your experience and the lessons you learned from this video under each sub-story. It is a great source of inspiration for people on the path of finding inner strength and spiritual freedom. When you find value in this video, don't, don't forget to like the comments and share with people you think will benefit from. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next videos that will help us expand and distribute. Stoic philosophy in as many people as possible. Continue to watch more videos on the Stoic lesson at the end of this video. Thank you for spending time with us today. Stay strong and stay true to yourself.